All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. I did the Thursday stream a couple days back. I had some severe technical difficulties. My cable was down for almost two hours. Went round and round with the uh, cable company or the internet company, which is Xfinity, and they suck. I was on uh, the helpline with them uh, four times. And it was the same old bullshit. Turn off the router. They ping it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. I apologize. But during that stream, we went across the subject of Antarctica. And a lot of people uh, in that chat wanted me to go into a little more detail in regards to Antarctica. Now, first of all, I'm going to say this. I have never been to Antarctica. I would like to go one day um, and check it out for myself but unfortunately one I don't have money two I don't work for any companies that have anything to do down in Antarctica and three there are an ass load of international treaties forbidding people from willy-nilly going down there why I don't know uh, but we can all make some assumptions <laughs> Uncle Nick is coming home for the holidays, and he wants to stuff your stocking. He's a cigar-smoking, aviator-wearing, liquor-loving punk. In fact, he's a lot like a quim-drinking army grunt we all know and love, without the brain damage. Don't line up all at once, ladies. Go to frankservey.com and pick up a copy of Uncle Nick today. Because I said so. Alright, now, uh, for those of you that are not up to speed, right after World War II, there was a uh, classified uh, operation that took place called Operation High Jump. We basically sent a fleet of ships. It was like 4,700 people, a bunch of ships, icebreakers, fueling ships, I'm trying to recall if they had an aircraft carrier or not. Uh, but they had a lot of shit going on. Okay, and that was run by uh, Admiral Byrd. They do this Operation High Jump, and there's all kinds of rumor control going on after the fact about how the ships were attacked and there were some casualties, though I haven't been able to come across any official casualty reports or uh, any uh, official or semi-official reports of lost aircraft or ships or anything like that, so... This all could be rumor control, but I'm going to say this right now. There's a lot of bizarre shit, pictures and so forth, coming out of Antarctica, especially now that we have uh, some higher level than normal ice melting during certain times of the year. Okay, so just before the end of World War II, two, uh, two German uh, provision U-boats, U-530 and u 977 were launched from a port in the Baltic Sea uh, following a steady uh, stream of surprise to, uh, supplies to carry through the closing stages of the war. Okay, reported they took uh, with them members of the anti-grav disc research development teams carrying notes, drawings, designs for the German flying disc. Other than rumor control, I really haven't seen anything, any pictures on this or anything, so who knows. It was 1946, and it was right after World War II, and they still had all of the systems in place for censorship and restricting um, information uh, that went to the public, kind of like today. Okay, except, you know, there's a lot more corruption going on, in my opinion. All right, so they went down there, and here's some pictures right here of, of what they were actually de dealing with. All right, they had to basically break through miles of ice to get, in, to get to Antarctica. Apparently, it was incredibly punishing on some of the ships. You know, just sailing through ice probably is. You know, just ask the people from the Titanic. Oh, that's right, you can't. Upon Navy's return, all information was classified top secret. And the only person uh, being talked about the mission is Secretary of Navy James Forstall. And I believe he became Secretary of Defense shortly after this. Now, 
After the completion of this mission, Forstall was mysteriously institutionalized at Bethesda Naval Hospital Psychiatric Ward. I believe it was on the 16th or 18th floor. And lo and behold, he committed suicide. I don't know. Kind of odd. Same thing, you know, after World War II, he gets smoked. Patton gets smoked. In fact, a lot of individuals really didn't live much longer after World War II who were in charge. A f you know, a few made it into the 70s, but a lot of crazy shit was going on. And, uh, I mean, these are just questions right here. I mean, I have no idea why they would make this top secret and why they would send such a heavy force down there. Perhaps they were, you know, believing the rumors that uh, Germany had set up some bases down there. And they just wanted to make sure that uh, this was not the case. And if it was, they're going to, you know, make them surrender or, or put them uh, to the sword. Okay, now this here, what is this? This is a Freedom of Information Act uh, document. And supposedly, this is the actual uh, information from Operation High Jump. All right, you can check it out. It's uh, documents.theblackvault.com. They go through uh, pretty much the entire operation. They talk about, uh, they call it high jump by name. And they go through uh, the temperatures of the air, water. I mean, they literally, you know, go into very good detail in regards to what took place during this operation. Again, you know, it's black and white. This is, uh, I think it was prepared in 47 or 48. It's pretty dry reading. So... You know, you can get it, you can find it yourself and go through it. But, uh, you know, I already skimmed skim through it. There's really nothing in here that, that jumps out at you for any craziness that went on in Antarctica. Which, at the time, it was top secret. And back then, they handled top secret a little different than they do today. So, technically, a lot of stuff that was classified top secret back then have never been unclassified. Why that is, I don't know, but uh, apparently there is a process that that takes place when uh, you're trying to figure out uh, or how things are declassified when it comes to the United States government. But for anyone out there that's interested, you can find this, you know, on an easy search in the internet. It's not a big deal. Here are 20 creepy photos that were captured in Antarctica. Bizarre cubes formed. This is fucking weird. Because, you see, these are right angles right here. Okay? Mother Nature doesn't really do shit in right angles very often. Okay, and finding this many right angles this close together is very, very odd. I don't even know what the chances statistically are for this to happen, but it exists. Here's the pictures. It's quite weird. Okay, uh, UFO spotting. There have been pictures of UFOs taken down there. I don't know if this is legit or not, uh, but, you know, this is not the first time I've heard this about uh, a bunch of strange lights and UFOs or whatever they call them being seen or in and around the Antarctica in the air and in the water. Okay. Now this is, this one here blew my mind. Antarctica's blood falls. Now from what I understanding, this is rust of some type, uh, that is uh, being pushed up through the ice from, uh, either a volcanic vent or a, um, hot spring that's pushing the water up through the ice and this has been going on for a very long time if not uh, since we started uh actually recording the crazy shit that went on here here's some more pictures here of some the blood red falls never mind this ugly chick here okay and there's still red water running in antarctica and i don't think it's going to stop anytime soon Okay, they have icebergs that are emitting strange and horrifying sounds. And, uh, 
they think this might be done because of the uh, con, you know, the expansion and contraction of the ice, along with uh, relieving pressures and so forth. It's causing a. Uh, it's very similar to like you walk around in an old uh, wooden house and the floor creaks, and it you hear it uh, settling when, as the seasons change and so forth. Same principle here. Okay, and you know they're monitoring the ice songs to track uh, shifting ice. There we go. They're going through the perfect rectangular iceberg. Okay, okay. <laughs> what the hell is that? Look at that shit. Holy crap. Perfect straight line and right angle. Okay, I don't know if this is just a perspective thing, how the picture was photographed, but that looks pretty crazy right there. Again, Mother Nature doesn't do things in straight lines and right angles very often. And here you got four of them, along with the other ones in the pictures uh, that were the first ones in there. Uh, City-sized icebergs breaking off. Yeah, we've heard all about that. Nothing new. Okay, the mysterious jade green iceberg. Uh, uh, why this is, let's, let's get a look here. Emerald green iron oxide in seawater. New color iceberg resulting in yellow tinted iron oxide seawater. Combining with the crystal blue of the ice makes it green. Ice is vanishing. Uh, it is and it isn't. All right, so I've been getting reports the average to above average amount of snowfall in the winter, but still we have large icebergs breaking off. And uh, so apparently there's something to this uh, climate change. But I'll tell you right now, the climate of this earth has always been changing and it always will. Okay, and they're asking other lost continents. Well, Antarctica is on land. So technically it is a continent. Now, if I recall, they had a map come up in the 1500s that a, a Turkish admiral had copied off of that actually showed the shoreline of Antarctica without the ice. How the fuck did that happen? I don't know, but it's very, very bizarre. Okay, heat under the ice. You know, listen, if there's land, chances are there are volcanic seams and you're going to get uh, heat under the ice. That's just the way it is. Ice caves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, this is really kind of bizarre here. Uh, they're finding, you know, DNA evidence from plants and animals found in other parts of the continent and the world here. So, I have a... I have a feeling that Antarctica at some point in this Earth's history, you know, had life on it. Blue ice, green ice, unexpected colors, blah, blah, blah. Now, this is weird here. They've actually found a couple of lakes that are underneath the ice, and they're finding bizarre life forms and so forth down there. And some of these things have been isolated down there for millions and millions of years. All right, hang on, that's the next one here. Okay, this is more of bizarre shit here in Antarctica. Okay, the alien face in Antarctica. All right, so, you know, this kind of looks like it's been doctored a little bit. I, I don't know. You know, this is weird. I don't know if uh, there's been some Photoshop shit going on here, but that's pretty bizarre. If it's untouched, that really weird, really weird. And that does look like a face. Just going to say it's got nostrils, mouth, eyeballs, eye slits. Who knows what's going on with that? Okay. It looks kind of like Akhenaten from Egypt. All right. Oval shaped object. All right. Now, what the hell is this? All right, so there are, I believe it is in the Sudan Desert. They have a bunch of rock piles and so forth that look like cattle pens. 
that were there thousands and thousands of years ago and you can still you can still see the stones outlines of how everything was set up now I, I'm not sure if it was the Sudan but I know it's a desert somewhere in, in Africa or in the Middle East and this is what this reminds me of right here you're gonna see a lot of strange shapes and this kind of looks very similar to those cattle pens or what have you that uh, were set up, you know, it's just weird. Let's see, here's, I'm not gonna click on the video. All right, now this one blew my mind here, the pyramids of Antarctica. So let's just be honest here. There are pyramids all over the earth. There's South America, Mexico, there's a few here in America, Europe, they say there's some in China, um, in the Balkan regions. So, you know, I'm, listen, if in fact there was a civilization on this planet thousands and thousands of years ago, if not longer, that was building pyramids and Antarctica was not covered in ice, why would there not be pyramids there? I have no idea, but here we go. All right, now a lot of these uh, images have been taken off Google Earth because I've looked for some of them and couldn't find them. Let's see, strange stones. All right, now what, what the fuck is this? Straight lines. Nature does not do this often. Okay, why the hell is this? What the hell is this? Why are we not up there digging this shit up and looking? You know, I've heard a, a couple of rumors that uh, they have found some pretty crazy shit in some of those lakes that were located in Antarctica. So, and the way they explain it, these lakes have been covered with ice for millions of years. Now, if that's, I don't know if that's true or not. I've heard all kinds of conflicting stories. All I know is weird shit is afoot down there, and I would really like to get to the bottom of it. Okay, mysterious rectangular structure under the ice. Let's see what this is. This is a rectangular iceberg. Now, it looked a lot cleaner in that other picture, and I don't know if that one was doctored or not, but this does look pretty peculiar here. Okay, strange object emitting a ray of light. All right, what the hell is this? Okay, it's emitting light. What could that be? I don't know. All right, so apparently a big hole appeared in Antarctica a few years back, caught everyone by surprise. And tech, you know, the rumor control is there's another hole somewhere in Antarctica, which you're not allowed to go near or fly over. So, yeah. Apparently there's a, a theory out there that the earth is hollow at the top and the bottom. And I don't know, doesn't sound uh, you know kosher to me, but this is conspiracy theory night. So we're gonna talk about it. All right, here's another picture of the pyramids. All right, there's a top view of the one in Antarctica, and this is the Egyptian pyramid here. I don't know. This is fucking beyond bizarre here. Just got to ask the questions. What the hell's going on? All right, here, I love this one. This is about as close to you're fucked as I can possibly even imagine. Because how the hell are you going to get that the fuck off of there? You're going to hook a cable to it from the rear and pull it over the crevasse. Is somebody going to get in there and try to drive it over? I wouldn't advise that. Uh, and I'm going to, as a betting man, I am thinking that they probably wrote that vehicle off because that shit is crazy unsafe. All right. For those of you that, uh, don't know we have been doing uh, strip mining and pit mining for a couple hundred years if not longer and 
this looks like a gold mine in Africa, a diamond, some of the diamond mines in Africa, because they kind of dig down and they go in plateaus to get to the bottom. And that's in Antarctica. Now, how the fuck did that happen naturally? Can somebody please explain it to me? Because it's not clicking in my brain pan. Here's another one here. A 378 meter wall. Look at that. Straight line. Again, Mother Nature typically doesn't do shit in straight lines. All right, now, what the hell is this? What is that? I have no idea. Now, this one really blows my mind. Because this, this looks like something that was made by an intelligent race. I mean, there's, I can't really, I can't come up with an explanation. You know, I can overlook a straight line here and there, or even a right angle. Shit happens. But look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 crevasses here along a straight line. And then over here, you can see the same thing, but this one's filled in with snow. What the fuck is that? Can somebody tell me? All right, now this one here, this picture, I saw this a few years back. And I don't know if this is the angle of the photograph, perspective. I don't know if it's photoshopped. I pulled it off of uh, newsintact.com. I don't know. This looks pretty bizarre. Because again, there's a few shapes that don't really happen too often. But a round shape like this right here will actually happen in nature you know, there's animals that are, are perfectly circular. There's uh, clams and mollusks that do this. But that is a really big one right there. What the hell is that? And uh, listen, I don't have the answers. Okay, I'm not, I'm not pretending I do. I'm just saying it to you all out there. Some weird shit. Okay, and people have to start asking questions. Like, what the fuck? Now, right, here is another picture of that same pyramid. Look at that. Boom. Look at, I mean, look at that. What the fuck is this? One, two sides. There's a third side and a fourth side over there. This looks like a smaller one next to it. All right, let's see if we go here. And this is uh, Mr. James Forstall, who sent a bird down there to do the uh, Operation High Jump. Okay, so this guy, you know, served through World War II as an admiral, later became, uh, I believe, the Secretary of Defense. Okay, okay. In 1949, exhausted from overwork, Forrestal entered a psychiatric uh, treatment facility. The attending psychiatrist, Captain George Raines, was handpicked by Navy Surgeon General, and the regiment was as follows. First week, narcosis with sodium amytol. That is a sedative, I believe. Second week through fifth week, a regiment of insulin subshock. I have no idea what the fuck that is. Don't want to know. Doesn't sound good. But uh, insulin... You don't want to fuck around with that because if you have any sensitivities going on and you use too much, it will kill you. It'll put you in a coma and then you may or may not awaken. Okay, consider electroshock. What the fuck are you thinking? I mean, that's just... Electric shock is... It's still used today. And to be honest, it's probably not that helpful. Now, they put him on, I think, the 16th floor of this particular hospital. And he decided to hurl himself off and was found dead. Kind of weird. So, Captain Ranks diagnosed him with uh, depression or reactive depression. I have no idea what the hell's going on here. I just find it odd that this is a high-functioning individual 
Made it all the way through World War II. They get done with high jump. And he winds up getting, you know, going into a psychiatric uh, hospital and then dying shortly thereafter. Okay, and, he, and apparently he was on the road to recovery. He regained 12 pounds and uh, they found him half naked on the uh, third floor roof below the 16th floor kitchen across the hall from his room. Okay, and they found a note. It was a poem. They said it was a suicide note. Who knows? Now listen. Uh, there's not a lot of people out there who can question the fact that a lot of veterans are committing suicide. It's nothing new. Okay, and I talked about uh, the PTSD thing in one of my videos way back in the day. I'll have Blake link it in the comments below. You know, a lot of people come back from war zone and uh, they just can't hack it. They get used to living a certain way. And uh, like, for instance, uh, in a war type environment, high end, high end tempo, a lot of shit going on, even if you're not in combat. And then all of a sudden you go from that world where it is just drinking from a fire hose to chilling at home so your brain is used to operating at this level and then all of a sudden you go to that level and a lot of people when they come when they wind down from that can't stop and when they get to the normal level they just keep going all the way into the dirt nap okay and uh i'm trying to help people with that but at the end of the day it's you and you alone that can uh curb this fucking behavior all right now i looked up the forestall diaries it's like 500 some odd pages uh it says it's 581 pages i only found one that was 540 550 pages uh apparently there's one floating around out there that was not uh censored or um had pages removed i have not been able to find it so I've, I have no idea. I mean, it's just, it's just very bizarre. There's a lot of strange things that go on in the fucking, uh, in and around Antarctica. And I don't think we're ever, uh, going to get, I don't think we're going to get the answers we want until we have people going down there on a regular, on the regular and bringing back independent footage. All right, um, I have a feeling that everything that we see coming off Antarctica has been scrubbed and we just are not getting, um, you know, f truthful, upfront knowledge about what the hell's going on down there. It's easy to believe, oh, nothing going on. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. But there's a lot of crazy shit going on down there from rumor control and there's the pictures that have come out really are not explainable like you saw them I, I went through them here and showed them to you it's very fucking bizarre i saying this is the birth of the original conspiracy theory i don't know i can uh, think of a lot of conspiracies that have been going on for a long time so I don't, I thought he threw himself off of the 16th floor. How does hanging oneself from the 16th floor window sound a little absurd? So I don't know if he tried to hang himself and then fell to his death. I haven't read the um, reports in depth. There's been several that are out. So you could, you know, you can do it yourself. Other than the dude had a high, uh, high level position with a lot of knowledge. Probably had above top secret. And... Either he went nuts and they killed him to shut him up or he knew something that was fucking uh, drove him insane and then he killed himself or he was helped out the window by someone else. But anyway, this is my take on uh, the whole Antarctica horse shit. I'm not, it's not technically horse shit, but you know, I am just chomping at the bit to get more information uh, what's going on down there. And if you guys have any pictures or any other information that I have not shown here, please email them to me at redonkulous12 
gmail.com and i could do a follow-up video on this uh because it, it is interesting as hell